even find it in places where we wouldn't expect it. When researchers examined the stomach of a beached sperm whale in 2012, they found 30 square meters of tarpaulin, a four and a half meter long hose, a nine meter long plastic rope, and two flower pots. How is this possible? On average, a European uses and disposes of more than 100 kilograms of plastic per year. The large part of plastic waste ends up on huge landfills or in the sea. Today, more than 100 million tons of plastic is drifting around the oceans. Due to particular currents in the Pacific Ocean, a new continent has been born. A mass of plastic waste the size of Europe. In some areas of the oceans, there is up to 60 times as much plastic as there is plankton. Because plastic does not rot, it lasts up to 500 years. Through exposure to sun, wind and water, plastic is broken down into microscopic parts. These plastic particles can absorb high concentrations of agricultural and industrial toxins. Many animals mistake the plastic for plankton and eat their fill. Every year more than 100,000 turtles, marine mammals and seabirds die a slow and painful death because they starve with a full stomach or because their intestines rupture. Other marine creatures in whose cells plastic and toxins have accumulated end up as seafood on our plates. The smallest form of plastic are microplastics. They are added to cosmetics, shower gels and toothpastes. A tube of toothpaste contains up to 10% microplastics. The sewage plants cannot filter microplastics, so they too end up in the sea. In the making of plastic, hazardous chemicals are used in order to enhance elasticity of fire resistance. Bisphenol A, plasticizers or flame retardants are contained in almost every plastic product. Through exposure to heat, the wrong detergent or simply over time, plastic will go brittle, thus releasing these chemicals, which in turn, through the airways, ingestion or through mere touch, fight their way into the human body. The consequences are severe. They include increased risk of cancer, asthma, infertility and developmental disorders. The plastic industry tries to cover up any scandals and runs a gigantic lobbying campaign in order to prevent stricter laws or inquiries. Plastic factories are veritable fortresses, the plastic production process a tightly kept secret. This is one of the reasons why no one is exactly sure what substances are added to the plastic. 
Over the course of the last 10 years, only 11 chemical substances could be analyzed out of a total of 100,000 possible additives. But there is hope yet. Intelligent robot nets, or fishing boats, converted to floating recycling factories are intended to cleanse the oceans. Bioplastic, made of maize or starch, could replace conventional plastic. However, its production consumes valuable food, so it's no solution for satisfying the global demand for plastic. This is why you must radically change your consumption behavior. Pay attention to the packaging of products. Substitute paper or cloth bags for plastic bags. Don't throw away old plastic, but recycle it and use plastic-free products. Are we going to allow the destruction of the Earth to continue? If we act now, there may still be hope for future generations, before the miracle material definitely turns on its creator. The poplar tree. It's a fast growing and versatile plant ideally suited for producing renewable fuels and other products that are usually derived from petroleum. It's also widely grown to produce wood and paper products. But even more, it's a particularly effective resource for recycling treated wastewater from our cities and cleaning contaminated soil on industrial sites while reducing carbon in the atmosphere. In the Pacific Northwest, poplar trees are grown by many municipalities to recycle treated wastewater, improve water quality, and reduce waste. At the same time, the trees produce woody biomass that has additional economic value. As wastewater is collected, it's transferred to a wastewater facility for treatment. This typically involves removing organic solids, which can be made into a soil amendment and used to fertilize poplar growth instead of going to a landfill. The remaining clarified water is further treated through microbial processes and disinfection. The water can then be recycled for returning the treated water to streams and rivers or for irrigating poplars, which can further purify the water by taking up additional nitrogen and phosphorus. Poplar trees are an excellent crop for recycling water and nutrients, while also sequestering carbon and contributing to other community sustainability goals. Another exciting application of poplar trees is for phytoremediation and cleanup of industrial sites. Phytoremediation is the practice of using plants to stabilize or reduce contamination in soils, sediments, surface water, and groundwater. Poplars remediate by absorbing and concentrating nutrients, including nitrogen, phosphorus, and ammonia at their roots, enhancing soil microbial activity, and breaking down contaminants within the plant tissue. In addition to absorbing nutrients and contaminants, poplars can also prevent topsoil erosion. 
help restore riverbanks, provide carbon sequestration, enhance habitat for wildlife, create beautiful landscapes, and provide effective riparian buffers. Advanced Hardwood Biofuels Northwest supports municipalities growing poplar for recycling wastewater and industrial facilities growing poplar for phytoremediation. These trees may also be used in the future to provide renewable fuels and bioproducts.